It's the Daily Vibe. Tonight, from the band, Bad Aces, Wesley Pipes. Libertarian mayoral candidate, Patty Rice. I'm Chris Walt. And now, here's your host, Cody Simmons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Much to talk about tonight. For a while, the missing Malaysian airliner mystery seemed to dominate the headlines. Everyone all over the country was glued to their TVs. It was like something right out of ABC's show Lost, with all the speculation about what probably happened. Also, much like Lost, everyone eventually lost interest in it. <laughs> Also, when asked about where the missing plane might be, a Malaysian airline spokesperson said, at least we know where it isn't. So, sounds like they're getting close. (laughs) Studies show that since the economy has shown little to no signs of improvement, the number of middle-aged adults moving back in with their parents has gone up 25% in the past five years. Thankfully, we know that in two years, Obama will be moving out. Am I right? Just kidding. It's all Bush's fault. (laughs) What do you think about that, Chris? You know, I think it's pretty pathetic, Cody. Didn't you just move back in with your folks? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Let's get this straight. Um, They moved in with me. They just get to pay the rent. Sounds like a fair deal, right? Hey, did you guys hear? Twitter's teaming up with Life Alert. You know, the company elderly people call when they take a spill. Maybe instead of Twitter, they should call Tumblr first. <laughs> Seems too more much, appropriate. Too much, Cody. No, no. I, I wrote that one. A lot of places trying to go healthy, including Krispy Kreme Donuts. Chris, you like Krispy Kreme, right? I should love Krispy Kreme, but my parents won't let me have sweets anymore. Oh, right. I forgot. (laughs) Well, anyway, Krispy Kreme just announced that they are going to start selling what they call veggie donuts. Sounds delicious, right? Uh, I'm just being told that Krispy Kreme has just filed for bankruptcy. Too bad. I thought it was a good idea. That's a good idea. Yahoo just released an article about the top three most overpaid jobs in the nation. Number three was consulting software engineer, followed by marketing research designer in second. And finally, the number one overpaying job was being a real housewife of Atlanta. (laughs) True. Hey, yo, Cody. It's kind of funny that late night talk show host wasn't on this list, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) How would you like to be unpaid? Whoa, whoa, okay, it's just a joke. You know I'll be right here if you need me. Hey, any sports fans out there? Well, good news, in case you haven't heard, the World Cup is making a comeback after four years. When asked what they thought about its return, most Americans said, the World Cup is hockey, right? (laughs) Also in sports, any of you see what happened during the playoffs? Apparently, the Spurs Coyote got into some sort of altercation with the Dallas Mavericks mascot, Champ the Horse. Turns out it wasn't Champ. Actress Sarah Jessica Parker just happened to be at the game. (laughs) (laughs) L.A. Clippers owner Donald Sterling was banned for life by the NBA last week after making a series of racist remarks. Those close to Sterling said they started to grow suspicious when he brought close friends Michael Richards and George Zimmerman to one of the games. Hey, hey Cody, let's not forget Paula Dean. I saw her at his house, too. Paula Dean. A lot of entertainment news. Speaking of fights, actor Mark Wahlberg made some negative comments about the boy band One Direction that led to a fight between the teeny boppers and Wahlberg's new kids on the block. Witnesses say it didn't last long, though. Apparently, the guys from One Direction had to leave for their hair appointments, while the new kids on the block had to hurry back to waiting tables and parking cars. (laughs) Anyone care for Adam Sandler? Didn't think so. Well, him and Drew Barrymore are starring in the romantic comedy Blended that is supposed to hit theaters May 23rd. When asked what it was like starring with Barrymore for a third film, Sandler said, 
I wouldn't know. All these movies have seemed to just blend together. <laughs> Hip-hop artist and record producer Jay-Z has been smothering the headlines with his recent clash with sister-in-law Solange Knowles. Apparently, after leaving a Met Gala after party, the rap artist wanted to keep the night young by joining R&B singer Rihanna at a private party instead of calling it a night with his wife Beyonce. After a short yet heated argument, a drunken Solange took a few kicks and swings at the rapper, allegedly telling him to go home and be with his wife instead of being selfish. I guess you could say Jay-Z has a hundred problems now. <laughs> Not 99. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, get this. After the recent success of their latest Captain America film, Marvel announced the release date for their third film on May 6, 2016. Things grew complicated when Warner Brothers also claimed the date for the Man of Steel sequel, which is set to feature Ben Affleck as none other than the Caped Crusader. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Batman and Superman are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Captain America on the same day. I mean, this is going to be the biggest showdown in box office history. What do you think about this? Cody, you know I'm not worried. I know the Caps can hold his own. I don't know. I mean, fans have been waiting for a Batman-Superman crossover for what, like, forever? Come on, Cody. Did you see The Winter Soldier? Way better than The Man of Steel. Like, can't even compare it. I mean, it was good, but come on. Batman and Superman are like the two most popular comic book characters ever. I suppose if you like your characters bland and uninteresting. Admit it, Walsh. Marvel doesn't stand a chance. <sighs> I, I don't know. I think uh, DC is looking at another Green Lantern fiasco. You know what? Instead of arguing, why don't we just settle this in... Versus. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's Versus. Tonight's topic, who will win the summer 2016 box office? In the Captain America corner, we have Christopher Walsh. In favor of Batman vs. Superman, it's me, your host, Cody Simmons. Each of us will have one minute to defend their topic. Chris, you're first. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Cody. Captain America, played so brilliantly by the remarkably talented Chris Evans, is guaranteed to win the summer blockbuster office. After the tremendous success of The Winter Soldier, audiences are just thirsting for more caps. I, mean, I can feel it. Their anticipation will only be greater, especially after The Avengers Age of Ultron, which is sure to be a hit both with audiences and critics alike. Man of Steel, on the other hand, had mixed reactions and showed the character of Superman in a much darker light. Summer is a time where audiences want to leave with a positive movie-going experience. While Batman vs Superman is nothing more to offer the genre other than underdeveloped characters, endless battle sequences, and mindless explosions. Cap rules. Peace out. Cody? Thank you, Chris. While I personally enjoyed Man of Steel, it was a rather conflict-ridden film. Let's not forget that the sequel is also set to feature the first theatrical appearance of none other than Wonder Woman played by Fast and the Furious bombshell Gal Gadot. Also with Affleck's pal and fellow Oscar-winning screenwriter Chris Terrio helming the script, it's sure to be a hit. While I agree, many will see Captain America due to the success of Marvel's cinematic universe, there's one thing Marvel doesn't have, and that's... THE BATMAN! We've got a great show for you guys tonight from the band Bad Aces. Wesley Pipes is on the program. Also with us, Libertarian Mayor Candidate Patty Rice, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around, we'll be right back. What is media communication? It's how we communicate. It's visual communication through video production, photography, print on the web, music, and graphics. It's exciting. It's creative. The Media Communications Department features five unique programs. Journalism, Photography, Communication Design, Radio, Television, and Film, and Music Business. And it's at San Antonio College.
Hello, and welcome to 60 Seconds to Victory. With me is my sidekick, Chris, of course. And today, we've got a special show for you. Because instead of Chris challenging a celebrity, like last week's Kim Kardashian fiasco, <laughs> that was a mess, we are going to be challenging an audience member from Section B, Row 11, Seat 25. Where are you? Oh, there he is! Yes! Must be a big day for you. You actually are you Conan? I am not Conan, I'm Cody. And this is Chris. So, uh, where are you from? What, what's your name? I'm from Hawaii, Orlando. Hawaii, Orlando. Is that a new city in Florida or Honolulu? Gotcha. And what are you doing here in the great state of California? Comic Con. Comic Con. We should go to that. So, are you all ready to begin the game? All right, we're going to show you our first game over here. This is called Building the Snowman. What you do first is take these cotton balls and you're going to move them to this empty bowl over here. How do you do that? Using only your nose with this petroleum jelly. Contestants, are you ready? All right. And after the games, we will announce the final winner of all three. Ready? On your mark. Get set. Start that clock. All right, and Chris has already got two in his bowl. Doesn't seem like our guests can even get one. Oh, maybe one cotton ball. Uh, and there it goes. And Chris has already got two in there. Still two. <laughs> Looks like they're both struggling. Seems like they've had no practice in this game whatsoever. And doesn't look like he's even managing to get on there. We've got 30 seconds, 30 seconds left. And wow, he's got double, he's got a double snowman right there. Wow, we're, we're stacking these snowmen high, aren't we? All right, he's got only two, only two in the bowl. I think Chris might take the cake on this one, and we are done. We got, wait, 15 seconds. Five seconds. And we are done. Stop. All right. It looks like Chris won that round. Are you all ready for game number two? Okay. Wasn't that fun? Now, for the next challenge, you will take this balloon... And using your own wind power, you will knock down all the blue cups on your table. Contestants, are you ready? On your mark, get set, start that clock. All right, we've got Chris already having a full balloon right now. Looks like a big red clown nose. And looks like our audience member can't seem to get any wind power in his balloon. We might need a helium machine over here, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like Chris is almost done. He's only got a few cups left. And there's the second cup in our contestants' table. Chris is almost done here. Seems like our guest is a smoker. Doesn't seem like he can get anything in his balloon. And we are done! Without the clock even finishing, Chris is our winner once again. Now, we will return with game number three. Good job. Y'all are doing a fantastic job here. All right, for our third challenge, this is the most difficult game yet. Not even my wife, the Queen of Jenga, can do this. You are going to take these bananas and stack them as high as you can. Contestants, are you ready? On your mark, get set, start that clock. All right, it looks like we have peeling. We look like monkeys over here, have not eaten in a couple of days. All right, and here goes one, two, and Chris has got them all up. And he, they fell. You've got to get them to stay, Chris, for at least two seconds. All right, it doesn't seem like our contestant like earlier games can do it. All right, and he got it! Everyone, round of applause for my sidekick, Chris, over here. All right, you can stop now. You, you can stop. All right, contestants, are you ready to hear our prize choices? So, prize number one, an all-expenses-paid vacation to the Bahama Islands with an all-access pass 
to the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Photo Shoot. And prize number two, in our discretion of Chris, a free snack in the vending machine downstairs. And our winner, of course, is Chris. So what would you like tonight? Hey, Cody, I think I'm going to go ahead and take that free snack. I've, been, I've had my eye on those Cheez-Its for uh, a while now, so I'm going to go ahead and get those. And you heard it, ladies and gentlemen, Cheez-Its. We'll be right back after this short message. Our first guest has had a long but troubled career, first attempting to be an actor in Hollywood. He actually appeared in such hits as The Hangover and Pulp Fiction, but his acting was so forgettable that most people didn't even know he was there. After his failed movie career, he strangely decided to get involved in charity, charities that had celebrities attached, but charities nonetheless. After appearing in plenty of photo ops, but never actually doing charity work, he has set his sights on being a rock star, here today to talk about his debut album, Wesley Pipes. Go Wesley. Woo! We are here with Wesley Pipes from the band Bad Aces, and they just finished writing and releasing their third album, Street Candy. Wes, how's it going, man? Cody, it's going great. Chris, how's it going? Hey, I just want to say, first of all, it's a pleasure being on the show. It's a pleasure having you. All right, well, let's get to brass tacks here and talk about the record. The new record is called uh, Street Candy. It just dropped uh, about a week ago. Uh, it, it's got a couple songs in there you might uh, be a little familiar with on the radio, like uh, Rocket Surgery or uh, Riffer Madness. Uh, Chris, you're a, you're a big Aces fan. Oh, oh yes, of course. What, what's your favorite song? Uh, my favorite song has got to be, hands down, Cherry Lotion. Oh. Takes me right back to those high school days, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I've been there doing that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, so, Wes, what, what would you say uh, your... Uh, what your favorite song is on the new album? Well, uh, you know, Cody, it's got to be big, uh, big fat green cat. Uh, it's you know, it's a, uh, it's just a song about society and the the capitalistic banks that are just you know sucking all the money out of everything and just taking over while the rest of us you know we suffer you know with the wars and all. Wow, Wes, that's that's really deep. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Don't we have like seven mansions and a private jet? I, uh, I do, but I, I actually had to solve three of them. <laughs> so, uh, Wes, I hear you like to do a lot of humanitarian work. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Oh, uh, absolutely. I love, uh, you know, helping out people, especially the poor kids. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, me and the bandmates, we, uh, we like to get together and help out and teach, you know, the, uh, the underprivileged, you know, the mu music and stuff. Yeah, me, me and Chris kind of do some like, well, he does most of it, I just, I supervise. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's really nice, that's really nice. You know, it is nice, and, and it pays off too, uh, you know, uh, so we only take a, you know, a small little 70% chunk and give the rest to uh, charities and oh, stuff. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, anyway, I see you're about to go on a big tour, uh, you're going to travel all the world, visit a bunch of places, uh, tell us a little about that. Well, uh, you know, it should be great. It's going to be a good, great tour. Uh, it's going to cover over 80 cities. Oh, wow. It's and, the uh, largest one we've ever done, yeah. Uh, what cities are you most looking forward to? Looking forward to Paris. Never been to Paris Paris. Before. Uh, old Paris, I like to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, old, uh, Jim Mar Morrison's buried there. I like to visit grave site. You know, he's a large inspiration myself. Oh, that's nice. And mm -hmm. uh, after you're done grave robbing Morrison, what are your plans for after the tour? Just really just kind of take it easy, Cody. You know, I'm just going to relocate to my um, my Hampton mansion. It's five stories. Five. Oh, mention that? Six for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> two elevators. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Got an elevator in my house. You know, not many people can enjoy that. But, you know, we're just going to, you know, cook up some burgers and, you know, suck down some suds and, you know, just celebrate, so, you know, the completion of the tour. Right. Uh, it's funny, speaking of parties, I, uh, I know you recently tweeted a picture of, uh, I think you hurt your leg or broke your leg, had something. Uh, yeah, I boogered it up kind of bad, but, but uh, you know, it, it wasn't too, too, too bad, but I, I, what happened was I, uh, I made a, a little bet with my drummer, you know, uh, he bet me, uh, you know, I can, you know, make the pool off the roof, jump off the roof into the pool. And uh, how'd that work out for you? Well, uh, not, not, too, not too bad, but, uh, you know, it ended, it ended a little, little bad for a guy, a new kid, new kid on the block, uh, I hired him for a 
you know, a little valet parking in the driveway. Luckily, he was there when I jumped. Uh, broke the fall. Yeah. <laughs> that must have hurt. <laughs> and uh, after the tour is over, you're all going to start... Uh, Start writing a new album, start producing again, recording, or well, a lot of work goes into a tour and album, Cody. And you know, for the we're pretty exhausted already, not gonna lie. And uh, tour hasn't even started yet, so afterwards, we're probably just gonna take it easy. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for being here, Wes. It's oh, good seeing you. Thank you, like always, thank you, Chris. And uh, don't Chris. miss out on the band Bad Aces coming to a city close to you. Let's give it up for Wesley Pipes once more. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Patty Rice is on the program. Stick around. Woo! As a local politician, you may recognize her from her campaign trail. On Thursday, she will be appearing at the Caldwell Auditorium in Coffee City. Will you please welcome Miss Patty Rice? So, Patty, thank you for coming here today. It's, um, it's great to have you on here. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a little confused here. My notes tell me to ask you, uh, which political party are you affiliated with? I'm a proud member of the Libertarian Party. And for those of uh, those of us who don't know what that is... <laughs> what he's trying to ask you, obviously, is why would somebody want to vote for a vegetarian? Um, it's Libertarian. And the Libertarian Party is a political party established in 1971 by David F. Nolan, and we're the third largest political party and in America, and we're committed to... Uh, I thought there were only two parties. So which one are you? A donkey or an elephant? <laughs> um, neither. Our symbol is a porcupine. Uh, why a porcupine? Uh, it's a symbol that we feel provides a perfect balance of defensiveness and assertiveness for you see a porcupine only attacks when it feels it's in danger we also need more freedom and less government so we don't want the government to have a chance to attack the people I see uh, well speaking of logos um, can you explain this someone told me that this is the libertarian party's motto and by somebody he means <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> Chris that's our go-to resource Okay, Miss Miss Patty Rice, what does Tanstiful mean exactly? Is it Japanese, Arabic, Chinese, Greek, Turkish, Spanish? Possibly Hobbit? misspelled. Um, well, it's actually an acronym. Does it stand for they all need some time and attention for love? Um, are we still talking about politics? Absolutely. Um, okay, it actually stands for there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more? The basic principle is that we cannot get something for nothing. For example, if a group or a person should get something for nothing, another group ends up paying for it. Oh, okay, I see. It's kind of like how I paid for Chris's snack over there. Hey, whoa, well, whoa. Well, I want this thing fair and square, okay? <laughs> Um, the Libertarian Party does not promote this idea. If you want something, you either have to be prepared to pay for it or trade for it. Uh, back to your campaign, what office are you running for? I'm running for the position of mayor of Coffee City. Coffee City, and how's that been? Um, there's been a lot of work. We put a, 
Uh, my staff puts in long hours, but it's worth it. And I just came from a photo shoot for my campaign um, signs this morning. Actually, we managed to get a picture of you on the campaign trail. You, you did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was following you through the bushes. See, this is and you, and Chris is right here, yeah. and um, it's grass. That's not me. Oh. Ooh, I guess I must have followed the wrong person. Sorry. <laughs> There's a certain likeness, don't you agree? Um, can we talk about my campaign? That's what we're doing. And uh, anyway, uh, speaking of campaigning, uh, who are the other no nominees that you're running against? Uh, I'm running against the incumbent mayor, George Nelson, but even though he has experience on his side, I have commitment, eagerness, and a loyal staff. Besides, Mayor Nelson has lost touch with the common man. He doesn't see the struggle that they're going through. So you would say the people of Coffee City are being grounded away? <laughs> you made a pun. I did. That's a good one. I <laughs> wrote any that, actually. <laughs> Anyway, we're, we're eager to learn more about Coffee City. Uh, hey, wait, Cody. I already know all I need to know about Coffee City. That's where Starbucks was founded. Remember? I told you about that. Um, actually, Starbucks originated in Seattle. Still, Coffee City is a wonderful place. We have a population of 208 citizens. When you and I looked it on Wikipedia last week, it was 210, the population? I think so, yeah. So, mm, yeah. yeah. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones have left us. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. They decided they wanted to spend their remaining years in Canada. Oh, wow. How old were they? Um, I believe they're around 80. What? You, uh, you think I'm too old for 80? You're not 80, are you? Uh, who knows? I mean, I stay young moisturizing. I mean, I could be a proactive <laughs> spokesperson. <laughs> It's actually the spa. Me and him go together on our days off, and it's actually paid for by the studio. So if you want, after the show, we can go together and, you know, spa it up. It might do something about those bags under your eyes, too. I don't have bags under my eyes. Hey, don't take offense. It'll spruce up your campaign. Um, thank, thank you? I'm kidding. Anyway, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you for appearing on the show, Miss Rice. Uh, good luck in Coffee City. My campaign manager. Join us next week on the Daily Vibe, where we'll have Bruce Davis, the creator of the Trick Snake Canada Trick Snake Can. Good night, America.